Hey, how's it going? I'm gonna try to figure out what's going on with my uh, bike battery here. I'm gonna show you what's going on. See right now it says uh, 54.66362 volts, which is great. All right, now if I unplug the charger, it says 52.61. So yeah, I lost a couple volts there. So, so something definitely is going on. The battery's not at full charge or the BMS is uh, not putting out full charge. So to be able to figure out what's going on here, I'm gonna cut into the battery and diagnose the BMS, see if I can fix this. like 90% sure the BMS is on this side, so cutting away, looks like they used some form kind of a clear, clear tape here. I'm gonna cut that back in the way. There's the BMS, uh, heavily stuck to this foam. Let's see if I can try to save this foam here. Take it to whoever uh, built this battery. Ran out of black wire because that is uh, definitely supposed to be a negative lead there. Yeah, also the negative here. It usually comes from the battery. They just double backed to that wire. That's that's also interesting. Yeah, so this this should definitely be negative. This should be positive over here. Um, I guess uh, the seller that actually did this, the wrap on it had. Um, yeah, it said uh, twenty thousand milliamps, or uh, that'd be a twenty amp hours. It's definitely a lie. Um, Good thing I didn't pay all that much for it. I, I just kind of was up late when I bought it. <laughs> Ended up paying a little bit too much, but then he had a return fee to return it. So yeah, it was a little bit of a scam battery. I'm assuming I probably overloaded the BMS at some point, uh, charging in a hurry. Uh, actually, I actually think when I was up at Big Lake on my uh, solar tour, that that probably happened. I'm gonna look at these cells real quick, see what kind of voltage I have across each one of them. Uh, basically to test test the voltage, it's real simply just one on each end, like so, and you get it. Usually uh, I had to change my meter to the 200. I'm not too sure what all those mean, but I just set it until it ends up logically making sense. So I'm gonna end up testing each one of the 13 series to see what voltage comes out on each one of them, see what the kind of balancing that's going on here. Okay, so. Okay, then we go down to the 20 for that. 4.1, 4.1, that's only a variance of a hundredth, no big deal. Point oh three. That one's is definitely uh, low on that cell. Okay, so yeah, this battery is is massively out of balance. It's still kind of weird how it's giving a different reading for each one. Uh, let me take a sample of the battery with it plugged in. So the BMS is definitely definitely cutting cutting the voltage off on it, and it's probably because of uh, this BMS is doing a horrible job at uh, at balancing, obviously. Um, yeah, especially uh, cell number uh, looks like two three. Number four here is really low uh, at 3.87 volts. So that's extremely low. So this this BMS is doing, 
next to nil for any kind of balancing. Um, it does have the, uh, the test wires. That's, I assume that's why it's shutting off the charge, but yeah, it's not balancing whatsoever. So I'm going to throw a different BMS on here. Okay, I got this BMS here. I can't even begin to tell you what the what the name of it is, but I'm going to try this one out, see if uh, it can do a little bit better of balancing. I can tell with this one, pretty much I pushed it up to full charge. There's no warmth to it or anything, so it's definitely not charging. So first thing, I'm going to take the little balance leads over here, attempt to remove them. Okay, I'll need uh, my soldering iron to remove the negative lead there and negative leads there. Time to show YouTube probably the world's worst soldering skills on YouTube. A little flex there. Uh, this stuff. I've seen better. I've seen other videos where people have used it. It's not so messy. This stuff's messy. Anyways, it does seem to help. Alright, world's worst abused soldering iron. It's used to melt plastic and all kinds of things. Alright. Honestly, I didn't want to take these two leads off here. Alright, make sure I don't short anything out. That would not to be good. Alright, now I got the uh, negative lead here, believe it or not, with it being Red. <laughs> Fine craftsmanship. The best on earth, I'm telling you. And it looks like on this BMS, yeah, the battery battery comes in on this side. So I'm going to create a little bit of a solder pad there. Okay, and then I got this little little sub wire here, which yeah, that's gonna be a, that's a little bit of a stretch. Um, looks like I'm gonna have to plug it in, just <laughs> kind of the way the wire length is. Oh. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have hooked up the main lead first. Not too sure what just happened there. <laughs> A big spark. That and... <laughs> Try to hook up this janky little wire here. Okay, so showing well, it looks like just over 53 watts there. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to plug in the char <laughs> charger here. All right, and it jumped up a little bit, so, and the charger light is on red, so that is good. So this BMS is allowing the charge to go in. Um, it's getting a little warm. So, that could be expected with it being uh, so out of balance. And I did desolder it, so. Okay, I don't, I don't like this BMS. Uh, it gets so hot on the back end, I can't even hold my hand on it, and then it started shutting off. So, uh, I'm gonna return it back to Amazon. It's, it's not gonna do, do me any good. Um, it didn't shut off uh, the cells also when they got around like 4.2 
two, two volts. So I'd assume it was trying to burn off the extra voltage, but yeah, I couldn't even hold my hand onto the back of it. It was so hot. So yeah, this thing's not safe. Anyways, I'm gonna get back onto Amazon and find another BMS and hopefully it's not a POS. One of the things I'm doing while I'm waiting for the other BMS to arrive is, it's a little bit of MacGyver here, but <laughs> I'm using um, my battery charger, which uh, definitely identifies 18650s. And I hooked it up to one of the weaker cells. Uh, this side you got positive. Over there, of course, you got negative. And by doing that, I'm charging up the, the lower cells, kind of manually balancing the battery. Uh, of course, the battery charger will also kick off at a certain when it gets to a full near full state. Um, to make things even easier on myself, because the battery charger won't always get up uh, over 4.2 volts, so. What I'm doing is well, I'm trying to charge just about anything I can find that needs its battery charged up right now to try to discharge this battery a bit so I can get uh, all the voltage manually balanced while, while we wait for the, the next BMS. Okay, got my new BMS in. So I'm gonna hook it up and Gonna give it a charge test and a discharge test. Probably goes better in the last one. I think what happened on the last one is a lot of these port cables, um, somewhat standard but not entirely. Um, sometimes they flip them all around. They're totally in the opposite direction. I think that's what may have happened with the last BMS. But I can see definitely on from my, this one the negatives on the same side, so that matches up. That's definitely good. So it's not a reverse polarity one. I would have uh, known that if they would have included some kind of documentation or something with it, but they don't. I'm, my bad anyways. Learning as I go. Okay, just want to tent the ends a little bit here on each one of the pads so I have something to, to latch on to. battery, so this charge, and the charge port. Unfortunately this little wire here may just be too short so you have to find a longer piece of wire to extend that. Okay I connected the negative wire from the harness back up to where it should more appropriately be. So now I'm gonna hook up the BMS and hopefully nothing goes pop. Okay, first I'm gonna hook up the wrongly colored uh, negative wire here. Okay, yeah, that was much better than the last time. Yeah, that must have been why it popped. It was uh, the reverse polarity on the, uh, the last one. Oops, wouldn't be uh, the first electronic thing I've heard. Now I'm going to hook up the charging and discharge wires and charge it on up and see if anything blows up. Alright, going to go ahead and let that charge up. So it's at uh, 50, 52 or so. Okay, got the case all cut down and roughly taped into its shape. It's definitely looking good. Uh, now I'm just going to add silicone in to uh, waterproof it and I'll seal up the sides up better. Okay, now I just need to get the battery into some heat shrink. Get a little silicone on the table there. Oops. It's come off. Once it dries it will roll right off. Okay, and now I just need to heat shrink it. You can use a heat sh or a heat shrink gun or a hair dryer. Uh, I tried the hair dryer originally; it's a little slow. This is much faster, but you got to watch out uh, when you're trying to perfect it. Uh, you get it too close, it will melt a hole right through it. I found so.
just basically rotate it every once in a while, trying not to overheat the battery or the heat gun. I don't want to overheat it either, so I turn it off every once in a while. It doesn't look too bad. Cured the problem on it by replacing the BMS and basically gave more life to it. It seems to be acting better now. After a few charge cycles, it'll probably be even better. So I'm gonna go add this into uh, my other project that I'm doing. You should see a thumbnail here or somewhere if it's up already. Anyways, try to have a good day.